Hey Run Junkies, welcome back to Runners Without Limits TV. And today I have a viewer question. Kat asked about tracking your workouts. How do you track them? In what medium? And what data are you actually tracking? And lastly, why? Why do you do this? So today I'm going to answer those questions. Stick around. So let's start with the what. What are you tracking? What data is important? Many runners will have some sort of device, like a watch, that will collect information. Whether it's during your workout or throughout the day, many devices have a start feature to track the duration of the activity and likely some kind of step counter. If your device has GPS, then you have a second data point from which you can extrapolate not just total mileage, but average pace per mile, and usually some kind of lap pace meaning pace per mile or pace per kilometer broken down by each. Now going deeper, some devices have a heart rate monitor, which you can track your heart rate throughout the day or just during the workout. Now, not all devices have this. So if you want to track that, you might have to get a heart rate chest strap. There are many more data points we could collect like shoe tracking or power metrics. But I'm going to stop there for a moment because we can get way down a rabbit hole. <laughs> now from these devices, usually a watch of some kind, you should be able to sync to an app that will log all of this data long term. The watch really just collects the information and only has so much storage. It can only hold so much here. But the apps are going to take all that data and make some sense out of it for you. Now, if you don't have a watch device, some smartphone apps can be used as trackers directly with a start and stop feature, but this will really only track duration and distance. But you know, at a minimum, those are the data points I recommend duration and distance time and mileage. My third recommendation for a data point is something that the watch cannot do. And that is how the workout feels. Now, most of these apps will have a comment section for each activity. And this is where you might really see and feel progress over time. The comment section is where you provide the best feedback. Distance and duration are a small piece of the puzzle. How it felt to you is a significant part of the fitness journey because it's going to show you what you love, maybe what you don't shine a light on your strengths and uncover your weaknesses. All of this will help you improve over time. Now, there are many devices and apps out there that will gather the data and paint a picture of progress over time. The electronic versions of all of this make it really easy. It's automated and it happens so seamlessly, especially if you have it set to auto sync with your watch, you don't really have to think about it. Once your watch is done, you pop in a couple of thoughts about the run in the comment field and you're done. But a lot of athletes love writing their workouts down on paper. Seems like a strange concept, right? Some keep it simple and use a legal pad or a plain old notebook, but you can also find training journals like this one. I purchased this from gone for a run on every page. You can record the date, distance, weather, your pace, maybe the route you took and notes. This is a great format and there is no wrong way to record the workout as long as it is useful to you later. There is something cathartic and visceral around writing something down especially when it comes to recording how you felt. Now, yes, you can have both the electronic version, which will crunch the numbers and do the math, but you can also have a written log if you want to physically record your journey. So if at a minimum we record our duration, distance, and thoughts, plus whatever else we want, what exactly is the point? Why would we track it this way? Well, the day to day offers a satisfying feeling of checking that box, getting it done laying out a habit, right? Maybe it was a great workout. Maybe it wasn't, but it got done over time. Some workouts become benchmarks, a place to look back on, to see where we are now in relation to where we were then. Perhaps a year ago, a half marathon felt out of reach, but now you're doing double digit miles on your long runs and you're not batting an eye. You see, you've come a long way. Knowing you've done so much good for yourself is a great motivator to keep going, especially when the journey gets rough. There are other instances that you might want to compare side by side. For example, a race you've done before, and maybe you're returning to that same race. This might help you set your goals for the second time around. 
Will you go back and look at every single run and workout with massive scrutiny? No, probably not. But we don't always know which workouts are gonna set the bar for us going forward. Keeping a training log records the journey. It tells your story. Like all stories, there are ups and downs, challenges and victories. The training journal becomes your fitness legacy. And maybe it only matters to you, but that's the most important. Finding joy across time, showing up day after day, week after week, month after month, and so on. That's why I will always call this a running journey. It's a way to tell your story. You're writing it as you live it. And that's why we keep track. But what do you think? Do you track your fitness journey? And if so, how do you do it? A device, an app? Do you write it down? What are you keeping track of? Please leave thoughts, questions, comments, and suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. Please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, remember, you have no limits. Happy running.